Hello everybody, welcome to another live stream. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are joining me from. I know usually people join me from all sorts of places around the world, so welcome everybody. Um, if you are new, hello, welcome, welcome. Um, this is a different style of live stream to usual, but I'll get onto that in a second. Do let me know in the chat where you are joining me from because I do always like to know. Um, and also maybe tell me what time zone it is because in the UK it's the afternoon. So, um, you know, maybe it's the morning where you are or it's the evening. Sometimes um, uh, people join me from Australia, which is the middle of the night for them. So my goodness. <laughs> um, Minu, hello, welcome from Leeds in Yorkshire. Sort of worldwide local to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm here in London. Um, oh, I should introduce myself in case you're new. Um, my name is Alona. I am a milliner based in London in the UK. And today I'm going to talk you through my autumn winter hat collection. This is sort of a part one of the collection. So I've released a kind of um, the, the fun autumnal hats and then closer to winter when it starts getting colder around um, mid-December, end of, end of December, beginning of January, that's when I'll do like a part two winter release of more, um, more relevant cold winter hats, so like big berets, things that cover your ears, things like that. But today it's the fun cocktail hats and a few berets because I just love berets so much. And if you're going to start wearing berets, autumn time is the perfect time to start. So um, I've got a bit of a new setup today, so we'll see how we go. And also I need to make sure that I remember to um, keep hydrated with my cup of tea, otherwise my voice will get very dry. It's a lot of talking today. Hi Michael, hi Mary, hi Violet. Everyone's telling me where they're from, lovely. Lots of people from the US. So if you are joining me from the US or anywhere actually, if you're joining me anywhere from outside of the UK, the hats that I'm going to be talking about today are listed on my Etsy shop. So um, my moderator, uh, Matthew Ames, also known as Mr. Hat, could you drop a link to my Etsy shop into the chat, please? So if you want a preview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I do all my international sales through Etsy because Etsy handles the taxes um, and then everything that's local in the UK than I do through my um, standard shop, which is buyalona.co.uk. So you can look at the hats there as we go, but I will also be showing them on the screen, which I am going to start any second now. Right, uh, let's see if my setup is going to work today. Um, well, I don't really have a good segue, I'm afraid, everybody. So I guess I'll just jump straight into the first hat, which is, this is one of my best selling models and I think it's super cute. This is my leopard print um, classic fur felt beret. And I'll go into a few differences between wool felt and fur felt in a second. We can, no, not that one. This one, there we go. Here it is close up. Look at that. This is in a fur felt in an ocelot pattern. So it's the, the, the company I get my fur felts from, they don't really do a leopard print. They call this ocelot, but I call this kind of, you know, leopard print, animal print. And I can make this in lots of different styles of animal print, but ocelot is everyone's favorite. And my favorite thing about this beret is the front velvet bow. This is French velvet ribbon. And what I like to do when I put these berets on, because I do wear my own hats, is if I stick my fingers in through the beret and I can, sorry, through the bow, and I can fluff it up a little bit like this. So it becomes a little more voluminous. And then you can play with these little bits of the bow as well and I can pop that on my head for you as well in fact like this look at that I'm going to show you 
what sort of outfit I think these hats go with. So this is how I would wear the leopard print berry. As you can see on the screen, there's a lot of leopard print. Um, I've gone through some of my favorite places to shop at here in the UK at a wide variety of price points, kind of from the cheaper end of the spectrum. Cheap, when I say cheaper, I mean like, uh, like the dresses on the screen now, Finery London. Um, their prices of the three dresses on the screen, I think the skirt is £50 there. So that's what I would call a kind of middle tier. I haven't looked at any fast fashion, like the, the super fast fashion brands like Primark, H&M, Zara, all of those. I haven't looked at those because I don't, I don't shop there. So I don't, I don't really know their collections and I would hesitate to shop there myself just for just various reasons. So, um, start with the Finery London with their leopard print. There is leopard print everywhere this autumn. We saw a lot of leopard print last year as well, but this year it's really just like exponential growth in leopard print dresses, tops, skirts. I've even seen leopard print coats. So, you know, um, I guess it could be slightly difficult to wear leopard print and leopard print everything. So of course you could wear something like this um, with a black dress or a black coat and have your leopard print here or have your leopard print in the accessories. I've seen lots of shoes and bags in leopard print this year. So if you're looking to wear something like this, then that's that's how you do that. Um, these bows on the front, they are pins and they come on and off. So you can buy um, the bows in lots of different colors and I'll show you all of those in a bit with the next berry because this one I think looks really good in the black. Um, or I could put I could put a red a red on there as well, depending on how exuberant you are. So that's that. Uh, oh, and just to show you the sheer amount of leopard print, um, this is the I, I searched for leopard print on another favorite shop of mine called Nobody's Child, and that is their entire range of leopard print. That is a lot of leopard print for one season. There's several different cuts of dresses. There's blouses. There's trousers. There's mini dresses and skirts and tops, everything leopard. So as you can see, lots of leopard. So I've made leopard. <laughs> um, so this one's a fur felt berry. And this is how I would wear it. You can, of course, also tilt it forwards like this. It just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Some people wear it like this. Some people wear it like this. Of course, because the bow is on a pin, you can take the bow off and move it round. So some people like to wear the bow slightly more on the side like this. So again, just depends on your preference. And I've even had some people prefer no bow at all or bow on the back. So it just, this is, I think this looks a bit kind of very Chanel with the bow on the back like that. Um, what else do I want to say about the berry? I think that's everything I want to say about the leopard print berry. Of course, I've mentioned that it's fur felt. So the fur felt means it's a higher price point. Um, wool felt doesn't tend to come in all the fabulous patterns that leopard print seems to come in. So that's why when I do the leopard prints and, or any kind of animal prints or anything, they're always in the fur felt. But if you were looking for something a little bit more affordable, then I do the same shape, but this time in the normal wool felt, so it's much cheaper. And you can have a look at all the prices and all the information on either my Etsy shop for non-UK buyers and for UK buyers, it's all on my original official website. So this is what this one looks like. This one's camel and I've paired it with a green velvet bow. And once again, I can fluff it out if I want to make it a bit more 3D. There we go. And actually, do you know what? This is the perfect opportunity to talk about hair. So I've got my hair in a plait and a braid, which is generally how I prefer to wear my hair in the autumn. Um, in the summer, I like to have a bun. You'll see me with a bun quite often um, in my videos and things, just because I like my hair out of my face. But with head size hats like this, so these berries are head sized, so I'd have to know the person's head size when I'm making these berries made to order. Um, 
you can't really wear head sized hats with a bow with a with a bun at the back of your head because it's not going to sit right. You can wear them forwards like this with a bun at the back, but hair down or hair in a flat if you wanted to wear the hat off the face. So there we go. And this is the camel wool felt color. Dawn says she prefers the bow at the back due to wearing glasses. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I can, do you know what? Somewhere I have my glasses and we can actually test what the bow looks like with glasses on. I think I'm going to need the help of Mr. Hat to try and find me my glasses. <laughs> um, I don't know where they are. They're probably, oh, actually, we went out yesterday and I had a backpack. They're probably in the backpack because I didn't unpack yet. We went to see a, um, a flower show exhibition. The backpack is, oh, okay, he's coming in here. Sorry, everyone, a momentary um, disruption while I look for glasses, because I do, I do like to give everyone options. So if, if you're a glasses wearer, actually, um, Mr. Hat, could you also bring me my crab hair, hair clip from the dressing table? Because I'll put, I'll, I'll make a kind of big bow, um, big bun and then we'll, we'll see it. So if I pop my glasses on, these are actually reading glasses. Um, I think, yeah, it, you, you might find that the bow is like, it's, it's too much stuff on your face. So if I just rotate it, thanks. If I rotate it, that's just the label sticking out there. So don't, don't worry about that. This is the back. If I rotate it, this is how the same berry would look with the bow at the back. So there we go. You get all the angles. There we go. With the glasses and <laughs> without the glasses. Now I'm going to very quickly pop my hair into a clip at the back of my head and make a bun with my clip. And then if I try and put the beret on, you, you'll see how it doesn't quite, you see, look, uh, I'll turn this way. It just wants to go forwards on my face. So if you if you want this kind of look with the bun and this, you can of course try and get your bun lower as well. It's just I can never seem to make a bun that hangs like this. That's obviously the bun is lower and the hat's sitting better like that. But I can never seem to get the bun to not be to be on my neck rather than my on my head. So there we go. So that's another beret like this. And oops. Ooh, we haven't looked at this one close up. Let me show you this one close up. So we'll go this way. I've still got the leopard print up there, but you can wear these, you can wear these plain berries with the leopard print as well, you see. And here it is with the beautiful French velvet, French velvet bow that's on a pin. I'm not going to unpin it, but if I just fold that back, you can see that's how the pin sits. And that means you can take it off and move it around. Move it around the whole hat, however you like. Here it is. And then imagine it with the red instead. Like that. Instead of the green. That's why I like the um, berets in neutral colours, in, in browns, blacks and... and um, in, in off-white, I'll show you the off-white in a second, because it means that pretty much any bow colour will go with it. So if I show you the white beret now. Here's the off-white. So felt is never going to be super, super white. So you can see the, um, where I've got the screen with the white background, that's super white, and then this is off-white. It's kind of creamy, ivory. You're never going to find a totally bleached, brilliant white, optic white felt. So if you're looking for a hat that's bright white, then you're going to have to go for something that's um, fabric covered, because the felt, th this is as white as felts get. And here is the bow. This is the bow in mint, which I quite like that pastel combination. And incidentally, Pastels are super in in winter coats. So in fact, I think my next slide, let me go to my next slide. 
nope, that's not where are the pastels. There we go. There's some pastel coats there, which I'll get to with some other hats in a second. But you can see how that would go. And if you're looking to match that pink coat, this is from LK Bennett. You can see this is my Victorian rose velvet bow. And there you go. You can see the, the pin there. That's how that works. Of course, you can move it round just like on the other berries. And it's got the traditional beret spoke. And on the inside, it's got the Petersham ribbon. And the Petersham ribbon is what sets the size of the hat. So if you're making head sized hats, that's you, you can use one block and get three different hat sizes out of it. So I blocked all of these berries that you've seen today so far on the same block and they're they're sized at three different head sizes. And um, because I'm in the UK, I size them as metric for a European market. So that's uh, 55, 56 and 57 um, because the block that I have is size 56. And then I can get away with going a centimeter up and a centimeter down by putting in a sized Petersham ribbon. So that's this one here. Um, as for other bows, oh yes, I wanted to show some other bows. Let's go back a few slides. So these are the kind of autumn coats that I wear my beret with, and I like to wear all my hats. So I know that they they sit well, they function well. Um, so if you wanted to wear it with that middle coat there, that's that would be with this burgundy velvet bow. Or I've got the classic navy. Navy seems to never be out of style, especially here in Britain. Everyone's favourite neutral in Britain. Britain seems to have um, two definitions of neutral. <laughs> this, this is neutral, but then so is navy. <laughs> I don't know why we have such an obsession with navy in this country, but there you go. Um, and I've shown all the other bows. And all of these bows, incidentally, I also make as hair clips on French. I think these are called barrette. Barrette? Barrette? Yes, barrette clips. I never know how to pronounce those, but it's just really easy. Unclip, pin into your hair, into your ponytail or into your braid. And that's an accessory and it doesn't always have to be a hat it can just be a hair accessory and Chanel sent bows down down its runway about two years ago now and since then bows are in so lots and lots of bows in all the colors of the rainbow so that's all my berries I hope everyone's finding this interesting all right let's change back to the front. So now that I've done my berets, ooh, another casual style hat. So I, I split my hats up into a kind of casual and then the more interesting dressy hats that you might wear to autumnal races or um, vintage events. There's a lot of vintage events that happen in, in the autumn where lots of people like to just dress up vintagey and if you don't want to go full on vintage costume then my hats kind of hit that middle spot where it's not costume, it's not super vintage but it's 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 got a vintage flair. So one that's more modern though is this one. So there's lots of different names for this cap. Uh, lots of media, fashion media outlets and, and everything. They, they, they haven't seemed to settle on a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? On, on, a, on a standardized language set for describing hats. So I've seen this shape described as a baker boy, a news, a news boy, um, just a flat cap it's really not a flat cap but th those are sewn hats um so you know wouldn't know what to search for if you were searching for hats like this but these sorts of hats they are they're going to go with more of the casual coat style like on the oh i don't 
I don't know if I'm seeing what you're seeing mirrored, but with the camel colored coat, this camel colored hat, and it's got a button on the top, button decoration, and it's sitting like this. And here it is with glasses. I think you can get away definitely with wearing something like this with glasses because you've not got um, any big decorations. It's just the peak. And the peak is going to be really useful if you do a lot of um, walking, like if you've got a dog and you go walking a lot in the mornings and in the evenings, you know, it's, it's that time of year where the sun isn't quite, it, it, it kind of stays low, at least here in, in Britain on the, on the kind of London, London latitude line, we get a lot of low sun at this point, even if you're going out, like if, if I was to go out to, to the shops now, then the sun is quite low already, even though it's not quite sun setting and it might get in your eyes, but a peak like this is gonna protect you from that. So it's great for this time of year, the transitional period. So there we go, something a bit more casual. So that's this one. I'm going to run out of space on my table with all the hats. I'm going to have to do a a switch over at some point. Oh, let's go into the more exciting hats actually, and I'll do the switch over now. So what do you guys think of my berets? Anyone in the chat an avid beret wearer? Because I love berets and I don't, I personally don't tend to follow fashion trends, but berets seem to be showing up on um, hat, um, on uh, clothing displays in, in shop windows at the moment. So I'm very excited because I love, 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 love berets. Let's see this next hat over here. So this is my bumper beret and I've worn this model in quite a few of my previous videos just when I do um, presenting. Let me go into my next slide. And um, people ask me about what and how this one works. So I'm just going to pop it on. The fastening on this one, let's show you in the other camera, <laughs> show you in this camera the fastening. The fastening here is an elastic. And that's all this one needs because really it's just perching on top of the head. So I will show you in a second how that works, but you can see on the inside, it's finished with a Petersham ribbon that's binding the edge. Um, oh, I've got some questions in the chat, so I'll just answer those quickly. So, uh, Auntie B says, I love your hats. I've made a view to wear them all the time. I just started wearing straw for the summer. How would I order one from the US? So you can email me directly to uh, my email address, which is hats at buyalona.co.uk and um, tell me which, what kind of hat you're looking for, which model you're looking for, and I can create a custom listing for you on my Etsy shop because Etsy will handle the taxes for US. And um, I'll give you a price put it up on Etsy and then you can complete the purchase on Etsy. So just uh, email me. That's, you know, I'll type it into the chat. So my email is hats at byelona.co.uk. So if you email me there, then I will be able to um, chat to you about your order. If you let me know what it is you're looking for. Right, let's carry on with this one. So if I pop this one on, this is one of my favorites. So I wear this one in black and white, but I thought it's also super exciting with the, which way shall I wear it? This way? Yeah, we'll go this way. So you can wear these pretty much in any direction you like. So you can see I can play around with it on my head. Please excuse the hair going everywhere. So I can wear it forwards like this, and then I can tilt it to one side, I can tilt it to the other side. And these pom-poms, they are, where are they? Here they are. These are the pom-poms. The pom-poms come on pins. So with these pins, what you can do, 
here's one, here's a navy. It's just a mini hat pin. The end comes off. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. The end comes off, it's sharp, so do be careful, but you know, pins, pins are sharp, so beware. That's why I supply them with a tip to go on the end, so that once they're in your hat, it's safe, and the pin isn't going to hurt you. And with these pins, that's what these are. So you can see here in the back, they stick out, and I think they actually look really pretty, just a little bit of gold on the back. It's super understated. Once it's on the head, you can't really see these, but I do think it looks pretty even if they do poke out a little bit. And you can see this one, I've got a navy pom-pom and a lilac pom-pom. And you can, of course, have two of the same pom-poms. So this is what this hat would look like if I try and cover up that lilac in the navy. Very, very nice. Or Here's the lilac. And these are marabou feathers, so that's turkey marabou. That's generally what you see in all the boas. You get lots of marabou boas. This is what it would look like. You see, three pom-poms, you, you could do three pom-poms, but I think at that point there's more pom-pom than hat, and, and maybe that defeats the point a little bit. I think you still want more hat than pom-pom, but the pom-pom's going to give you height. So if I switch over back to my slides and pop this back on. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop this on. Um, this you can of course wear with your hair down or if I put my plait back into a bun and you'll see what that looks like. I think this looks really good with a bun. So if you're going to um, autumn races or any kind of outdoor wintry event that requires a hat, or maybe even if it doesn't require a hat, you just want to wear a hat for fun, then something like this is great. And you can see on the black cape there, a bit of green poking out. I do make these in green as well. So you can imagine with the blue and the green or with the black and a green with the cape outfit there, that would look great. Um, and I, d I don't know why this looks so good with a cape, but it just does. I, I think that when you wear a cape, you do need something on your head. You can see the model there in the beige. She doesn't have a hat on, and I think she looks a bit unfinished. So she could either do with a beret or with one of these. This is my bumper beret model, by the way. I think it would it would suit her very well with that. And that brand there is LK Bennett. So if anyone likes to follow um, royal fashion here in the UK, if that's if that's your thing, that's one of the shops that uh, Catherine, Princess of Wales, tends to shop at. It's LK Bennett, and it's a really really good quality brand. Um, they're very expensive and I went into one of their shops and I, I tried on a dress and I did end up buying it because it was on sale. Um, but the quality is really good at that price point. You're actually getting a good deal, especially when the dresses are on sale. Um, and I, oh, by the way, none of this is sponsored by any of these shops. I just, I should make, really make that clear. These are just some shops that I like to dress at myself and the, um, the ladies who have purchased hats from me in the past have shown me their outfits with, um, with these kind of brands in mind. So I thought that's, that's what I'm going to show everyone else. So not sponsored by the clothing brands. So there we go. Um, other things you can wear these berries with is the pastel coats that seem to be everywhere. So the baby blues, the lilacs, the pinks, I've got you covered with various different pom-pom colors. And I've also the other version of the bumper beret, which is the lilac with gold and pretty pink pom-poms. So here it is. In fact, let's go, let's do this. We'll show you this one. So you see, and you can, you can mix and match the pom-poms. So I've listed them on my websites with these pom-poms, but you can message me and say, oh, I want, I want the lilac one, but can I have it with some white or with some champagne pom-poms or, or with navy if, if you prefer. Pretty much, the, the, the great thing about these is actually the colours are super interchangeable. And you can of course get one hat and then extra pom-pom pins, so you can change them in and out. I think that looks really cute. And it means you get one outfit, one, one hat that you can then customise yourself to fit so many different outfits. So you get to re-wear it over and over again, and it's the same hat, but it's going to look different every single time depending on the colours you pick. 
and you can keep wearing it season after season as well. So let's say you bought yourself a new coat next year and next year lots of um, lots of bright yellow coats are in. Then you carry on wearing the same hat but change the pom-poms to bright yellow pom-poms. All the colours are on my website so you can you can look at that if if you want. Um, and here is this one. I guess I should put on put on the other one. And this one is wool felt and then this one is fur felt. So once again, just two slightly different price points, just like I said with the other other beret. Some people prefer fur felt hats. They they tend to wear better in the sense that they will last you longer. Um, but some people would prefer a slightly cheaper, more accessible price point. So I do like to offer the flexibility of both. Now, here's the thing. I've, I'm, I'm a brunette, but you can really see the blonde elastic here. So let's ignore the tag. You can really see the elastic. So what you'd want to do is actually do your hair after putting on your hat. And I know that sounds really counterintuitive, but that's why ladies aren't expected to remove their hats indoors and men are, because men just, you know, they take the hat on and off and on and off and doesn't really mess their hair so much. But with ladies hats, you want to be hiding the fastenings. And the way to do that, I had a short somewhere where, um, I've got feathers up my nose. <laughs> um, I had a short somewhere where I, where I showed how to do a bun with the elastic. So keep some hair forwards, take it back over the top of the elastic and then do your bun once your hat is on and don't expect to take the hat off. And that's why it's really important that your hat should be really light. So if I've got any milliners watching and you're making hats for people, try and make the hats as light as possible because you don't want people to feel heavy. Essentially, you don't want people like they're wearing, like, to feel like they're wearing a crown jewels on their head because that's really, really heavy and that's really gonna weigh you down. Um, if anyone's done any theater or costuming work or you've been on stage and you've had to wear something that's really heavy, you'll notice that after you know an hour or so into the performance, it starts to weigh down in your neck. At least for me, when I used to do, um, I used to do ballet productions, I used to be a ballerina, and when, when I did productions and they'd put like tiaras on the heads and stuff and they'd be very heavy and that would really weigh down the back of my neck right there. And I just, I just remember feeling the strain where obviously my body's hurting from doing all the ballet, but then the added strain of just the heavy hat. And you don't want that. Like if you're, if you're a wedding guest and um, you've been invited to the whole wedding, so from the morning to the evening, and weddings can be very long affairs. They can start at like 10 in the morning and then go late into the night until 11 or even 2 a.m. And if, you're, if you have a hat on that requires the fastening to be concealed, the hat has got to be light because you don't want to be missing out on the party, fiddling in the bathroom, trying to get your hat off and your hair back and all of that. So just keep the hats super light. So that's that's these ones. Those two are my bumper beret models. And um, I'm taking you through the ready to wear side of the collection. But of course, most of these I can make to match pretty much anything, any color, any texture, any style. I can even mix and match. Say you wanted um, just the casual beret, but you wanted it with a pom-pom pin. We can do that. Hats are so personal, you know, everyone has a different personality and that's that's the fun in hats and hat making. I always say the best part of millinery for me um, is when I, when I meet people and I match the right person to the right hat, it's just the best feeling ever. So let's move on now on to, if I go back to my slides, Let's see, which slide have I got next? Oh, that's the blue slide. That is for this hat right here. So this is, I've called this one, Come Fly With Me. And it's called Come Fly With Me because the colors really remind me of the vintage 
1960s golden age of air travel with Pan American Air Airlines Airways Airlines Pan Am Pan Am everyone calls them Pan Am and there was a TV show called Pan Am um, starring Margot Robbie this is years ago now but it's really stuck in my head the uniforms and I thought this would match those uniforms but apart from matching those uniforms it also matches all those things that I've listed there on the images so you've got your classic transitional season tweed dresses there uh, in the middle you've got the blue I know that's navy but I think you can get away with doing navy to um, to this kind of blue especially if you had this blue accessory and then the other picture there that's a leather skirt and that's because the accents on this hat this bow this is made with leather and it's not stitched if I stitch the leather you'd see the stitching line so the leather is glued with leather glue special leather glue onto the felt so that's not going anywhere it's it's sort of partly how the, the same kind of glue they'd use for for shoes um, and if you've got there's lots of leather, leather around this season as well so if you've got a leather skirt you're wearing somewhere having a little bit of leather on your hat is going to look really nice really sophisticated to pick up on those materials throughout your whole outfit And if I show you the inside here, this has got a um, elastic. And because this is one of these small hats, I like to give people options. So if you felt that the elastic wasn't um, holding the hat on strong enough for you and you wanted the hat to be what I call party proof, then that's what these little tabs are. So what you do with these tabs is you take some bobby pins and you cross, cross the bobby pins through through this net here and push it underneath as you put it on and then that would disappear on your head and you see when I tuck them underneath you won't be able to see them like that and if I pop this onto my head now some of these are meant to be worn um tilted one way or the other so i've just got to remember which way yeah this one's this way so you see you've got the you've got that upward motion so again playing into the 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 name of this hat come fly with me the hat is very it's in motion this hat very much very much in motion so if you're looking for a small cocktail hat for um for a winter wedding or something like that this is this is a great little hat for that so you can see oops you can see these these tabs poking out so as I said just get some bobby pins and tuck them under like that and you see it disappears I should have put the tags in after the live stream not before <laughs> obviously take the tag off when you're wearing your hat but <laughs> Auntie M says, hi from Eastern Canada. I'm a fairly new subscriber wanting to venture into wearing more hats than just a toque or a bucket hat based on weather. Lovely work. Well, thank you so much. Lovely to have you here. So um, I think I've already gone through that style of hat. So if you want something a bit fancier, um, but, but you're not looking for party wear, because this is very much party wear or race wear, um, then the the berets and even even these bumper berets that'll be what you're looking for I think but this is very much party wear race wear and I think I've covered everything about this hat and the leather and all of that so we'll switch to the next one the black black outfits now I don't tend to wear black very often but I know a lot of people like black and I can see why it can be really really gorgeous and for that I recommend something like this so I'll switch to the other view here it is so this hat I've called if you police <laughs> so a police um, spelt p-e-l-l-i-s-s-e -L -L -S -S -E or something like that it was a military style jacket worn in, in like the 17th or 18th century. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But I was looking at a lot of those jackets because my mother is now into historical reenactment. So I was looking at a lot of those jackets for her. And 
I just, I, I conjured up this idea for a more modern style hat than, uh, than that, but it's got, it just feels a little more military. So the kind of dresses that I'd recommend wearing something like this with, it's like those there. So you've got the long black column dress, but that's, you know, that's quite, um, quite modern. And the teardrop shape of this is going to really accentuate the height of, of anyone if you're tall and wearing those long column dresses, this is gonna look great. Otherwise, if you want to play on that military jacket style theme, anything with lots of gold buttons, so like that jumpsuit there um, on, on the model, on the far of the screen. So, and then the next slide will have, there's a few more black numbers there. So you've got a shirt dress that will also go, because you've got all that volume in that shirt dress, which will look really good with this trim, this kind of ruffle, ruffle faux bow trim. And you've got the um, the really, really expensive dress there. But again, I thought I'd include that one. That brand is one that's worn by um, people in the royal family here. So if, if, if anyone is, is following royal fashions, then that's that's one of the brands and it's expensive. And I don't know what they feel like. I haven't touched those dresses, but they do, they do look very nice. Um, before I pop this hat on, I'll show you the inside. So this one has a comb and um, the label is on the comb. In most cases, the label is the back of the hat and you look at the, you look at the label and that's how you know where the back of the hat is. And this has an elastic and this one's also fully lined. And um, if, if you are a milliner and you're wondering why line some hats, why not line others? It depends. Um, sometimes lining hats depends on um, like the price point. So if you've made a hat and you've calculated the hours of your work and you think, oh, actually there's a bit of space there for an extra, an extra flourish, then popping in a lining is a really nice way to elevate your hat a little bit. Um, if you're just a, a hat wearer, a lot of hat wearers prefer to have their hats lined because it looks nicer. Um, but I'm not, um, I'm not too, I personally aren't too fussed as a hat wearer from a hat wearing perspective. I'm not too fussed if my hat is lined or not, but I know some people are. So some hats I line, some hats I don't. So let me pop this on. Uh, which way? So once again, there's a way to wear these. So, oh, I should probably show you guys what I mean about this. So here's the label. You can see the label here at the back. So I'm going to be able to read the label and then pop the hat on. And this one, I tend to say in the description which side of the head it's worn on. This one's worn this side. And I'll show you why it's not worn the other way in a second, but this is, this is the If You Police hat. There it is, with the little twirly trim going around the edge. So as you can see, if you can imagine me stood up, I'm very short, I'm not very tall at all, but if I was a tall person, this would accentuate my height upwards if that's what you were trying to achieve. Um, and the reason this hat isn't worn the other way is if it was worn on the other, this way, you start seeing right through the holes in the trim and I just don't think that looks as nice. So um, if you wanted me to custom make you a hat and you always wore your hats to the left eyebrow, then I can rotate the trim and make it to you. Um, but this particular one, I just decided that it was going to be this way round, this way to the right, to the right eyebrow, there you go. And again, back to the elastic, the elastic is here um, you, you can sort of, you can see where the elastic is passing over the label, but, um, just because it's a brown elastic and I'm a brunette doesn't mean that I should let the elastic show. So if I was going to wear this hat, I would be doing my hair, uh, putting the hat on first and then doing my hair to hide the elastic. Always hide the elastic. There's so many photos that come out after Ascot where I think, um, where, where you see, really fabulously dressed ladies wearing their really fabulous hats or at wedding guest photos. And you see all the fabulous hats and then you see the elastic. And as, as a milliner, I just think, ooh, it's, it's the same, I think, as if you were wearing a dress and your label was showing 
at the back. You know, sometimes you, you're in a rush and you put your blouse on for work and then at the back, the label is still hanging out and then you get to work and a colleague says, oh, your label's showing <laughs> and tuck it back underneath. Of course, that's easy to tuck the label back underneath on a, on a, on a top, but on a hat, you need to pre, pre hide things. There you go. So please hide your hat fastenings. So that's this lovely one here. So that's the If You Police model. And History Laura, very appropriate na appropriately named, I think, for your comment, says, Polices are brilliant. I wear mine when, when I am in my modern clothing too. They are really swishy. They are indeed. So if you're wearing your police in modern clothing, perhaps this is the hat to match your police in your modern clothing with a modern hat. I'm not a historical fashion expert, by the way, so I, I might get the dates wrong or, or things wrong, but, but yes, please, so please don't, uh, don't get upset if I use the wrong word or the wrong date, just let me know. Let me know if I'm wrong. Right, the next hats. So these are all these lovely autumnal browns, very appropriate for autumn. We see a lot of falling brown leaves in autumn, and I've got two options for these. So sometimes I like to make what I call sister hats. So let's in fact switch to, where is it? This one? Oh, uh-oh, I've run out of battery. Uh, maybe Mr. Hat can come and do the battery while I talk about these two hats. I had the battery somewhere here. There it is, but I can't reach the camera. So that one. So. While the battery is being changed, let's have a look at these two on the front screen. So again, they've both got elastics, so you can see the elastics hanging out, but I'll show you the insides in a second. So what was I saying? Oh yes, I like to make um, sometimes sister hats, and I call them sister hats because it's pretty much, it's the same idea, but just slightly different, because um, some hat shapes suit some face shapes better than others and I will have a video on face shapes and hats and general um, figures and hats and clothes shapes and hats so do subscribe if you're not subscribed already to not miss those videos they will be coming um, very soon not sure when but I'm literally scripting them now <laughs> when I'm not doing live streams so there we go uh, but some people might suit a round button hat this is called a button hat and some people suit these teardrop perches. Now these are both wool felt. One is purple, one is red, um, but the bow is the same. The bow is the same sort of um, silk, uh, vintage silk bow. Let's have a look at them on the side. Mm, this one, so we might need to focus that. There we go, yep. Yeah. Um, so this is the brown one and you can really see this the the silk on the bow is really difficult to find modern silk ribbons that look this good this is a silk ribbon probably from the 80s it's a gorgeous chocolate color and here it is on the um on the red so brown goes really well with deep jewel tones like the red and the purple. This would also look really great on a green base if you were looking to match a green dress. And the berries are slightly different. The berries are on a kind of what I have available selection because these are all vintage berries. None of these are modern. So here I've got some um, really lovely lacquered cherry berry type things, some black, some yellows and oranges and reds with some waxed leaves there. And then on the brown example, the brown example is called Hip Hip Hooray because we've got rose hips and I just love the look of rose hips. When I go for my walks, um, I live near a, a kind of um, an open park sort of tree, woodlandy foresty area and that's got a lot of rose hips in it and they just look absolutely gorgeous at this time of year they're just as bright as these fake ones it's or maybe i should say the fake ones are just as bright as the real ones they look really really lovely and that's got some black cherries and one of these um big spheres and i'm not sure what this is called but i think it's a rather fun berry 
and the inside, I might as well show you the inside while I'm here. This has a comb, once again, label on the back and the elastic. And if I just pop that onto my head, oh, I think the front camera's gone now, gone now actually. Has it gone? Yep, the front camera's gone now. So we'll continue talking about these over here. So let's have a look at the inside of the red. Mr. Hat, could you change the camera battery? And here is the inside of that red. So this one I have lined, just like the um, If You Police was lined as well. Um, why have I lined it? It just looked nice. <laughs> I think I've finally gotten my head around how to make these gathered linings look very nice and not like um, like the back end of a cat, as I sometimes think they look like. But this, this I think, doesn't look like that. I think it's it's got that nice um, big pleats is the key to that. If you make your pleats too small on one of these linings, that's when it starts looking a bit mmm. But this, this with the bigger pleats, it looks a little more elegant. And again, it's got these tabs in the button, but the teardrop has the comb. So let me pop those onto my head. So with this one, with this brown one, you can choose whether you want to wear it to, oops, it's difficult because I'm, I'm, I'm not mirrored here when I'm doing this in, in the screen that I can see. So you can wear it this way and just flip the bow up a little bit if you want it taller. I apologize, my hair is all over the place because I've been taking hats on and off. So here it is. It's quite fun. Some people like the look of this kind of up and it, it looks very cutesy. If you were, if, if you didn't want to be so exuberant, you can just take those down and, oh, I was going to be trying to try them all on with glasses. Here you go, with the glasses. I think it's, again, I think you can pretty much get away with whatever you like when we, when you wear things, things with glasses. A lot of glasses wearers contact me and say, oh, I don't think I'm going to suit a hat because I wear glasses. And that's just not true. Anyone can wear a hat. It's just about finding the right, the right hat for you. So in, in this case, if you are wearing glasses, anything that is off the face, so this is off the face, it doesn't have a brim, glasses is gonna be fine with that. And the same with the red. Um, so I've got all these brown suit dresses up here. I'm just going to top up my tea, everyone. My throat is getting a bit dry. Very much playing into the British stereotypes. I do drink a lot of tea. I get through a lot of tea. Right, back to the hats. So these kind of purples, reds, browns, you, you can wear them. Any color you see on the hat, you can wear it with that. So this one, I, I happen to throw have thrown up some purples, reds onto the screen, but you can also get away with wearing this with the beige color, like this berry. And with the red, it's going to be a lot easier. There's a lot of red around, so, I go on to my next slide. Oh, that's pinks. Where's the red? There we go. There's the red. So you can get away with everything. Now with buttons, a lot of people never seem to know like, oh, how far forwards should I wear it? How far back should I wear it? And the answer to that is put it on and play around with it. So for example, with this one, I think it should just skim your hairline. Do you see that? So it's, it's, th this is where my hairline is, just slightly forward. So you can see the trim and you can, you can play with that bow, lift that bow up. So you can just see it. Um, depending on where the trim is put, sometimes you might want to go down to here, but that has the danger of falling off your face. Um, and that's why that's got these tabs. So as you can see, when the tabs match my hair color, you can already hardly see them. And then once you put the, the pins in them and tuck them underneath, you're not going to see that at all. So there you go, that's completely disappeared, that tab. Great trick, those tabs. I think all hats should have those kind of tabs in them because I don't get on with elastic very well. So I always 
prefer to have just tabs, but some people prefer the elastic, so I put everything in. Um, yes, again, you can see all those gold buttons everywhere, lots of buttons, 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 back to the um, military fashions. Gold buttons, very military fashion-y, but here the gold buttons, they'll pick up on the yellow, on the berries, and the brown, if, if you have a, a brown handbag, brown leather boots, brown leather shoes, that's going to pick up on the brown bow. So, And red and brown is a very classic combination. And in fact, I talk about um, uh, the Princess of Wales, Catherine, wearing um, various colours paired with brown rather than black in, um, in my previous video that was... Um, maybe Mr Hat, could you post that in the link in case people haven't seen that? That's the one... Um, where I compared how she looked with hats and without hats. And obviously I came to the conclusion that with hats is better, but you might have other opinions. So have a look at that video and let me know what you think. So all I did there was put the tissue paper back in. This is how I like to store them with tissue paper inside the hats, filling out the shape because it's going to keep its shape better in storage. Obviously take the tissue paper out before wearing. Right, we've only got two more hats left and my hair is looking a little bit worse for wear. So I hope you're enjoying this style of live stream. I know it's not my usual like how to make hats, but I thought um, I thought it would be useful to just give you some context in how to actually wear the hats as well. And not just by looking at, at, at royal and celebrity people wearing hats because most of us are just normal people, so we should try and wear hats in a normal people way. <laughs> so I think I missed a couple of slides. There we go, the pinks. The pinks. Pink, always a very popular colour, especially when it gets towards winter time. And for that, I've got this hat here. Move the tea mug out of the way. So here is this hat. This is called, and I can't remember what I've called this one. I think I've called it um, Bountiful Berries. There we go, that's what I've called it. So you've got here a beautiful autumnal spray of berries. Again, the vintage um, rose hips, which are lovely. Some more vintage rose hips, this time in brown. And look at how lacquered they are. They just reflect the light in such a pretty, pretty way. And I'm not sure if that's going to come across on camera, but the, the shine on them really is gorgeous. And then I've got some, what are these called? The black raspberries. <laughs> ah, English escapes me. Black raspberries, blackberries, black currants, no, currants are the other ones. Anyway, these black ones, um, they, they just look really nice with the red, just a general color palette of reds, browns, blacks, and that goes with the pink. Now you'd think the pink wouldn't really go with the red, but these are quite um, blue toned, warm reds, and that's close to the pink. It, pink will, wouldn't really look really good. This blue pink wouldn't really work with um, orangey colored, orangey reds. So, but, but with these almost purple, purpley red tones, it does. As you can see there, the dresses that this would go with at three different price points and obviously the coat. Now, a hat like this, I would wear it on the back of my head. So once again, I looked at where the label was, I read the label, and now I'm going to try and get it on straight. There we go. Uh, no, that's not straight. <laughs> Difficult without a mirror. Maybe that's straighter. There we go. Oops. So this one's got a comb and it's got those tabs. So those tabs are going to help hold the hat in place. You can see, well, hopefully you can't see, but you can sort of see one of the tabs over here to hold it on. And because this isn't head sized. So these last couple of hats I've been showing you, they're not head sized hats. So they're not going to sit on your head, they're not gonna hug your head, they're going to kind of perch on the top. Let me try putting this one on again. I've got the wrong hair for this. This one sort of requires more of a bun at the base. So if I had a bun over here, 
it would kind of sit on top of the bun and it would be held. So this is one of these Jackie Kennedy style pill boxes. So they're quite small. They're tall but small and they sit on the back of the head like this. Now, of course, there's no reason why you couldn't wear it forwards or tilt it if you wanted to. We can try that. So this would be, oh, get it straight on, straight on top and maybe let's tilt it this way. So you see that still works. It's going to need pins. I can feel it coming off my face because it's not designed to sit like this. But just because a hat isn't designed to sit one way or the other, it doesn't mean you can't move it around your head and play with it. Once you've got your hat, it's your hat and your hat should be expressing your personality. And part of that personality is how you wear the hat, not just how the hat looks. So this is just a classic, classic style. Um, again, winter weddings, races, obvious things, but also I think you can get away with one of these on a sort of, maybe on a date night. If you're going for um, a nice long walk in your pink coat, and your pink hat, it's gonna look very, very cute. If you're walking your dog as well, uh, if you're walking your dog in the city, not not if you're walking your dog in, uh, in the woods. <laughs> Maybe there's a bit too dressed up for that, but if you're just city walking the dog in, in the park with pathways, this would look really, really chic. So there we go, that's this one. And then the last hat, hopefully you've all seen um, the video before last, which was my um, Phalaenopsis orchid video with a spoon how to make these orchid flowers. So let me change my slide to the last slide. Oh, I forgot to mention these dresses. These dresses, um, these shift 60s dresses um, seem to be really in at the moment everywhere. They look really good with all of the small button shapes I've already showed you. And the last slide, there's the last slide. It's more of a party slide. So if you were going to your work Christmas party, this is the kind of hat I recommend you wear. This is one of these like proper cocktail hats. So like um, quite fussy. Well, quite fussy for me, not, not for my style. So you get the really fussy hats where it's like a burst of feathers on the top. But this is, um, this is a, a more sensible fussiness um, with the gold Phalaenopsis orchids, which was one of the previous videos. And if you're wondering what to wear it with, basically anything red that's a bit of a heavier fabric. So um, on one model there, again, the gold buttons, lots of gold detailing this autumn winter season. So I've picked up on lots of the gold detailing here in the large veil. And this veil is actually um, spray painted in gold paint because you can get a veil that's got like gold thread woven into it, gold metallic thread, but it's got that gold texture. And I didn't want that gold texture. I just wanted a gold color. So that's spray painted. And then these orchids, which you can look at more closely in the orchid video. Let's have a look at the inside here. So this hat has a little bit of everything. It's got the lining, it's got the tabs, and it's got the elastic. So you can wear it with everything. So let me pop this one onto my head. There we go. And this is one of these larger buttons. So where was the other button? This is a small button. So you can see the size difference there. This is a much, much smaller button. It takes up less space on the head. So this one's just a little more stately, a little more grounded, a little bit more, I am wearing a hat. So I'd call this, you know, lots of people have different names for hat shapes. This one, sometimes known as a smarty, sometimes known as a, um, a beret button. Uh, it's it's too big to be a button, but beret, beret button makes sense. Um, this one is called Gilded Glamour because of all the gold. I was thinking about the um, television show series. Uh, what was it called? The the one about the the Gilded Age in America. I think it's just called Gilded Age with um, with some very famous actors in it. That was a really good series. Really enjoyed that. So I was thinking back to all the visuals of that and here we are. And orchids were quite an expensive luxury show-off item in that Victorian Gilded Age time. So it all, it all fits 
um, what word am I looking for? Conceptually, there we go. It all fits conceptually. So there we go. Red gilded glamour button like this with heavy fabric dresses for parties in the winter, office parties, family Christmas dinner as well. A bit early to start thinking about Christmas, but you know, some people really enjoy the Christmas time. And if you're already thinking about that now, then you might already be thinking about your Christmas day outfits and this might be the hat for you. So you can check out my various websites where to find them. Um, so there we go. If you're international, so not in UK, have a look at Etsy. If you're in the UK, have a look at my official buyalona.co.uk website. If you would like to purchase a hat and you don't see the hat that you want listed, then email me at hats at buyalona.co.uk. And other than that, that's all of the hats that I had to show today. So does anyone have any questions before I sign off while I take a sip of tea? You have five seconds to come up with any questions. Violet says, well, Christmas is only 12 weeks away. 12 weeks is very close and also so very far away. <laughs> oh, and if you are in London and you want to try on some of these hats, I will be, hopefully, fingers crossed, it is confirmed, but you know, things, things might happen that prevent this, but I will be at a market called Queen's Park Good Space Market on the 10th of October, which is a Sunday, and it's quite a short window. It's, I think it's um, 10 to 2 or something like that, about only four hours market time. So if you want to try on any of these, and I'll probably have some more models by that time as well, so you can come and visit me there. Um, other than that, I'm also, oh, sorry, December, not October, December, sorry, yes, we were talking about Christmas and then I got confused. So yes, that's why. December, 10th of December, which is the second Sunday of December. And then the third Sunday of December, I am hoping to be somewhere in central London over that um, third weekend. So I think that's a couple of weeks just before Christmas. So if you want to come and try on some hats, if you want to buy yourself a Christmas gift or you want to buy someone else the Christmas gift of a hat or a hair accessory, come and visit me. I will be posting on Instagram all about where I'm going to be and when. So hopefully I will see some of you there. Some of you do pop in just to say hello. So thank you so much. Um, other than that, this has been a really lovely, not too long, very relaxed live stream. And I hope you've all enjoyed it just as much as I have. Thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. I hope you all wear all your hats. Maybe you'd like to wear some of my hats and um, have a lovely rest of your day. So, um, see you all next time. Bye.